great. Hey, w- welcome to Free Range American again, Neil Curry. It's always great to have you on the uh, to have you on the show. I'm going two cups today. Two I, cups. We're gonna have to take a piss, like right now. Break between the show here with all the stuff we got going on. Yeah, I think it's gonna be one cup, and this is uh, this what, we call this the C bomb. Yeah, I like how you use another cup for the sleeve because you don't want to waste sleeves. So just put it in another cup. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's called the cinnamon bomb. It tastes a little bit cinnamony. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a word or not. I think it is. Mm-hmm. I went with your Irish cream, which is actually really good. The Irish and it, cream? And it goes with the season. Do we really you have pro- an Irish cream? Yeah. It's like you got a huge poster on your front door. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Irish cream uh, yeah. latte. And right. I don't know who made it, but uh, you did a good job. In- I don't come in through the front door, so I wouldn't even know. I That's, don't even know. You probably should just, I know. See, <laughs> just, going just on. see what the fuck is going on. <laughs> uh, Neil, we have so many things to talk about. But first, the first thing I want to talk about is this. This is a World War One. <laughs> <laughs> this is a World War Run. Uh, replica, I should say. Replica trench knife. Um, give me your give me your two cents on this, baby. Like just tell me what you think of that. Well, I've been out of the army too long. What was that? Is it CIF where you get issued your gear? Yeah. Yep. So I'm I'm thinking I'm a private. I'm going to CIF to get issued my gear. Right. And and some guys like <laughs> just slides this across the table. He's like, here you go. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just gonna shitless, right? Yeah. Like, what am I gonna be doing that <laughs> I, I need this huge brass knuckle knife? <laughs> And then over time, you get used to it, right? Yeah. Like, I would be running around yeah. with this thing, and it has the sheath on it. So I'm like, right. I'm never going to use the knife portion of this shit. I'm just yeah. going to, like, just, just punch people. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, it's it's freaking gnarly. It's surprising that this was at US 1918. <laughs> right? Yeah. It makes me so giddy. Oh, and don't forget the... Uh, yeah. I mean, it, like, glass breaker, right? But nobody uses it to break glass. I don't know. I think that was just straight up... <laughs> A hammer. Skull thumper. Yeah, skull thumper yeah. hammering device. <clears throat> this makes me so happy. Um, <laughs> and I don't know why it makes me happy. I guess it makes me happy because there was a time in America where Should make this, sad. this was issued equipment for the warfighter. And there was somebody going, you know what? The guys need downrange. They need a dagger... That's also brass knuckles with a big fucking <laughs> spike down here because these guys are going to be in the trenches stabbing and punching people. And I like the fact that they have the forethought to not only go, when things go from stabby, they can go to punchy and they need multiple forms of, uh, you know, I guess spikes and, and sharp objects to really solidify your bludgeoning tool. I would love to see the training manual, the TM <laughs> for this knife. Oh, like yeah. in what incident would you go instead of stab motion, you go punch motion? <laughs> like, okay, so there's this scenario where you stab the guy, but no, this scenario, you actually just punch him with the brass knuckles and then skull thump him. Yeah. The, like, tra- the block the of curriculum in- <laughs> on this would be so incredible. Like you're going to go stab, stab. Okay. Transition, punch, punch, transition, you know, and like the, the block of instruction on this with, with the dummy that you're stabbing and punching with your, with your brass knuckles and your skull thumper. Um, yeah. And in, in ranger school, you had that knife portion, you know, where it's like you, you like, <clears throat> I can't even remember what it is, but like slash, slash, you know, yeah. stab. With yeah. that one, I guess, you know, and, and I don't know, does the does the punch or the stab come first? Either I or. I don't know. Maybe stab, get him to the ground and then punch, you know, back of the head. Maybe it's but, punch, stab. I don't know. I think it would be interesting to find out if... Yeah, uh, we need the TM. Yeah. If anybody it. knows where we can get the TM to the World War I <laughs> trench knife, we would love to see the block of instruction on this. I also think there's no way in hell... This knife could be issued to an American service member today. There's no way in hell. There's no way if the media saw this knife being issued to, even if it was Green Berets or Navy SEALs or Rangers or whatever, they would have a absolute fucking mental breakdown. It'd they be, they would be lose the it. top headline. Yeah. You know, uh, which is crazy to me because 
If you think about this, and this was issued equipment, knowing that you're sending people off to, to kill other people, you want them to be proficient and have great tools to do that, right? This seems like a great hand-to-hand killing tool. To me, just in general, I'm like, this seems like a really fucking good tool, right? Why they ever got rid of this, I don't know why, because it seems really fucking awesome. Um, but it's something I don't think that you could you could get away with issuing today. I really don't. It's probably in the Geneva Convention. You can't even use it, you know, with <clears throat> napalm and and fifty cal's or you know whatever right. else was out for ban back in the uh, those previous wars. Which seems crazy to me because you know you can shoot them and blow them up, but yeah, the end state is the person is dead. Right. Like like no, we're not like your job is still to go and kill people and, and you know in defense <laughs> of the United States, but right there's a certain way you have to kill them. Like you can't kill them this way. I mean, ultimately you're going to die. Isn't that just like some attorneys? Like that's just like some attorneys trying to create work for themselves. Just like, Hey, there's a right way and a wrong way out there. When you're in the field, guys, make sure you abide by these rules. You can stab them twice, but not three times. Right. Yeah. Yeah, You know, you cross the, your, uh, you you go to your limit of advance, your, your uh, limit of advance, then you, you, you've, You've, you've accomplished your task. So now they become uh, wounded combatants that you have to take yeah. care of. Yeah, which but now is you got to patch up those, those staff patch holes. those guys yep. up. What an I, interesting knife, Neil Curry. Like, I think this thing is awesome. I wish I could find a real one. I think they're super expensive. When you find a real one, I think they're really, really expensive. I'm going to start looking. If somebody knows where I can find yeah. one of these, shoot me a DM. I'm going to buy you one for your birthday. Mm. I think they're like $3,000. Totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got these. So I have a group of nerds downstairs that I, that I, I love. They're actually like, I'm, I'm kind of head nerd. These are the coffee I mean? nerds? <clears throat> no, they're my art, my uh, art department. So they're skunk works. Oh yeah, Chris. You guys are awesome. Yeah. So I've got, uh, I wanted to see what the quality of these were before I actually gave them to the, to the guys. So I got some replica V42s and some World War One trench knives that I'm going to give the nerds down there. Like they're, they're all d and d up. You know what I mean? Like some guys got a fucking Hungarian horse bow and a sword and like they've got Star Wars shit everywhere. It, it's like, it's like going down to Comic-Con when I go down to the, the, the art department. <laughs> it's like cruising around Comic-Con. It's it. awesome. You got the Mandalorian helmet and everything down there. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I got to admit, like, that's kind of like, that's kind of my thing too. So, you know, it, I say what I, I, I put on a good front, you know, I put on a good front, like, like I'm not a nerd, but, and I, I don't even know what that actually means, but, you know, I'm probably king nerd, I guess, uh, when it comes to the company, because yeah. I can just like, ride my one wheel around and grow out fucking weird ass mustaches and be as like eccentric as I want. You know the I mean? same way. You still got to have fun. I mean, there's a, there's a time to be, be the businessman, be serious. And there's a time where you can, you know, lay back, have fun and show the employees that, uh, you're not, you're not the, uh, the serious CEO, but you can loosen up a little bit. I think the guys like seeing that. I think so. I mean, what do you think about those CEO videos? I'm doing the the beats the behind dude. the scenes. I think, I think it's my, <clears throat> I think it's my new favorite series that you're doing. That <laughs> HR one was hilarious. Okay, freaking good. hilarious. Good. I, and uh, yeah, I think you should keep doing them. I I am. I'm going to. Um, I think it's just a matter of. You get, and I have like five, ten different ideas on doing which which and like these scenarios that I like doing and it doesn't require anything. I just fire up the camera and, and, uh, be as fucking ridiculous as I want to be, uh, which is super fun for me. Yeah. The um, H, the interview with the HR lady was probably the best part. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. So, uh, what, what's going on down ready Gunner, man? What are you guys doing? Same old selling guns, trying to find ammo like everybody else. And, uh, just, just living and we're playing our role in this, Big episode. I feel like uh, I was thinking about this the other day. I feel like everybody who doesn't live in the U.S. who watches right. U.S. news, it's like watching a, an episode of Big Brother. Yeah, it is. Like, like the the American news has become the new reality TV <laughs> for every foreign country. Where it's yeah. like we're Big Brother, and it's like Biden's the guy in the house who's just fucking crazy and always yeah. doing the weird shit. 
And then you got the bitch Pelosi, you know, who's cheating on everybody. Yeah. And, and then there's like all the normal people in the house like us. We're just like, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> These guys we live with are just freaking crazy. Everyone thinks this is a crazy house. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an inter- interesting times for sure. What do you think? Um, what do you think about this this gun legislation? Have you kept a Have you kept a? I'm, I'm close watching eye them. On it? I'm watching them. That uh, the HR one fifty seven, and it's like they talk about it. The bill is there. There's all kinds of crazy shit in this bill. Right. Like just they're shooting for the moon. Right. They just put everything in this bill. Right. And hopes probably for some negotiation to get it down to. The Something. big things they really want, which is universal background checks, yeah. their assault rifle ban, as they call it, the standard capacity magazine or high capacity, as they call it, magazine bans. Right. Um, shit, shit that really has no backing or statistics of, hey, this is, these are the guns that have been like killing people in the US. Right. Like if you look at the FBI crime database of, of guns yeah. using crimes, it's like handguns and. Yeah. But for whatever reason, they're trying to ban all this other stuff that really doesn't even play a role in, in you know, big numbers in the U.S. So it's, it's just it's just funny, the rhetoric that people buy. And the Democrats can really, and this, this is their platform. They can come out, they can say anything and, right. and pitch, you know, do the sales pitch to their Democratic following or, or their constituents. And the, the Democrats are like, oh, yeah, yeah, ARs are bad. You know, no, it feels like no one does any research. No. Like... It, they can go up on stage and say anything and everybody believes them. Like, oh, we don't need to research that. Pelosi said it's bad or Biden said it's bad, you know? And if they say it's bad, it must be bad. And But I I love all the heat that uh, President Biden's getting right now. All these promises he's made that he's not following through on and even the Democrats are giving him shit about it, which is like, we we act like this is the first presidential election we've ever been through. I know. Where like, we always believe the politicians are going to do what they say they're going to (laughs) do. And it's like, oh man, I thought this was the time. (laughs) We're like in a bad relationship with our our, our politicians. We're like an abusive, like society's in a bad relationship with our politicians. Like we keep going back. Like, oh, but this time, you know, it's going to be different, baby. I promise. Like, I'm really going to do it. We got two black guys. Yeah. He's going to, where he's going to be better. He's going to be better. He told They're not going to take me. my guns yeah. this time. I promise. <laughs> They're going to, you know. Oh, I, it is. Like we're, we got a short-term memory. It's like we're in, uh, unable to pick up a history book or even look back to eight years ago, you know, and just kind of see the. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're fucking gullible human beings is what <laughs> it is. It's like we see something on the fucking news and, yeah. and it's like, oh, it's on the news. It was on CNN, you know, right. they said it on the news. That's yeah. that's your source when you're talking to your buddy and you're like, well, I heard this. You're like, no, that's not real. It's like, no, it is. I heard it on CNN. I heard it on the news. Oh, okay. Yep. You got me. I think it's just interesting that people still watch the news just in general and believe the news just, just in general. And I guess there's probably a few different programs out there that, that have substance, but most of it's just partisan shit. It's just partisan shit, shit talking and shit throwing. Uh, so I've just kind of tuned it all out, man. Like, honestly, once the election, uh, the day after, the two days after, whenever, you know, I, I, I kind of realized that, that Georgia was the hinge pin to everything with the Senate, I just kind of turned it off. And uh, once we lost Georgia, I was like, uh, I got I to gotta get, or we, I shouldn't say we, collective, the... You know, uh, I knew that this was going to be an uphill fight for ultimately guns. I that's what it's it's not a single issue. It's just it's it's a very very specific issue because there's there's a very sophisticated group of people on the left that that ultimately I they want to use this as as what I think anyway is they know there's no statistical background to this. They know that there's no substance to this conversation, but you know what they do know? They know that they can, they can activate their soccer mom portion of their base to scare them to thinking that there's something going on, that there really isn't anything going on. Uh, And so they can fabricate a piece of information. They can activate them around substance, something that they can, ultimately try to push across the line that when I say that, 
I think there's enough uh, blue and red senators. I'm hoping that they'll just be able to dumpster this. Like it's 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 over. Uh, I'm hoping, right? Like keep my fingers crossed. And oh, we're, we're oh by the way, uh, we'll we'll have an option for two years down the road to change it back, right? Uh, and, and it nothing pisses people off more than you know getting something taken away from them. So I think this is a great opportunity for. I think people that love their liberty to ultimately activate uh, because they can see the agenda. It's there. Uh, but going back to my previous point, I think what this is, this is a talking point that they know they probably can't pass or they have like, you know, a, 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 some probability of passing that makes people feel good like they've done something, but they don't actually have to do anything of substance. It's like, you know, we have real issues that people are dealing with in the United States. Like, you know, you have a cratering economy, you have small businesses that are being, you know, shuttered by the, rushed, the, yeah. the, the thousands, you know, you have this, you know, strategic interests and arms that are, that are, you know, the Chinese basically have the, the economic gun to our fucking head. The, you know, the Russians are impeding in our elections. Like, but what we're going to do is we're going to be like, oh, you know what, guys? We, we got them high capacity mags. Yeah. You know, we got you 1400 bucks. Don't don't mind the 6,000 uh, uh, people crossing the border, the yeah. southern border every single day. Like, you know, ISIS right now and all these other uh, terrorist organizations are sending people over to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, borders open. Let's get those cells planted in the U.S. You know, right. let's plan them. Get your uh, strategies going the next two years. I was telling Casey, you know, as unfortunate and scary as it is, I'm like, I, I bet you we start seeing some terrorist attacks here on U.S. soil again here in the next few years, guaranteed. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. I think that the the the, the grand scheme of things, I, I, I've continued to try to figure this out. Like, what is the objective in having open borders and free money? Folks. Like, there's... Yeah, it's, it's just votes. It's a very selfish, non-sustainable action. They can't, they, they can't actually sustain that for the long term. It will collapse on itself. But the thing I never, you know, you know I, was, I, was, I was watching some stuff on social media yesterday or the day before because the, the $1,400 stimulus checks and people are like, oh my God, the government's so good. It's like, that's your money, dum-dum. What the fuck are you talking about? You're getting back 2%. You're getting back your that, money. You're getting back 2% of your money, <laughs> which is, it's a $1.9 trillion yeah. dollar bill. And I can't remember like what the nut of the, of the stimulus check is. It's like 350 yeah. million or something like that. That's going back. And the rest of it's going to all this other just, uh, just bullshit projects. Bullshit. Yeah. You know, a lot of it is is Nancy Pelosi, you know, selfishly using that money for personal gain and and paying back uh, lobbyists and all that right. bullshit. And uh, and we're everyone stoked about their you know their Everybody's little stoked. tiny stimulus check of like, hey, we're giving you. Can you imagine, Evan, if you gave me a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, and I'm like, hey. Evan, I'm going to pay you back 1500 bucks of that. I'm going to give welcome, you You're welcome, buddy. I'm going to give welcome. you 1400. <laughs> I'm going to give you it's like no, oh, it's my money. Like I I never understand this mentality with people. It's like that's your money. The government is not giving you anything. They they don't give you anything. It, it it's as if they're 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 thinking about it in the circumstance of it's a benevolent dictator or king that's just like they're giving you your, yeah, it's your money, dum-dums. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're not giving you anything. You're just taking your own money back. We're so, we, we become so used to just, I mean, we get taxed. And as a business owner, you see this on the next level and you know this better than anybody yeah. is the taxes you pay across the board. I love it. Uh, I mean, you're double tax on certain things, you know, Triple. like income tax, employee tax, property tax. I mean, you pay taxes on everything. And I'm cutting those checks as a retail business. You know, I have to pay yeah. it. If Once you hit a certain amount, you got to pay it every 30 days. So I'm paying taxes every 30 days to the state. I'm paying my federal tax. And you're just kicking out tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes to the government. Everyone acts like the government is this enterprise business, like this multi-billion dollar like enterprise that like, yeah. man, they make so much money. They're going to give us some of that. It's like, no, you're, we're, you we're giving them you're... the money. And they're using it. I mean, I've worked on government projects before and to see how they spend money, 
you have you have people <clears throat> think about this you have people who are spending money which is not theirs not earned by them no on you know 100 million dollar projects and they're like yeah that looks good let me just write you a check here from the DOD for 100 million dollars yeah. and like you know some of them obviously there's a lot more due diligence than others but it's when it's not your money it's easy to spend yeah. And we're overpaying on so much stuff. It's ridiculous. I mean, if if the government was ran like a good business, the amount of debt you could cut or expense you could cut from your business, it would be a guarantee in like the billions and billions of dollars a year saved because you streamline processes across the board. You couldn't do that. Like that, I mean, we've, we've, you know, we've proven that. We can't do that. We, we've, you know, the, the, the corporate establishment, you know, the, the government is the, 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 the biggest corporation in the United States. I think it was like Elon Musk was talking about this. It's the largest corporation in the United States. And it, it's, a, it, it's a self-licking ice cream cone. And ultimately, you know, the government and people that kind of profit from the government, that's an entire industry of folks. It's a really powerful, it's the most powerful industry in the United States, when we think about it, because it's a it, it profit center is based on who is working, it's sustaining, and who's uh, parasitically surviving, right, from the government. And when I say that, I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking more about corporations that have a parasitical relationship with the government. Um, and it's it's really fucking interesting to me because when I have these conversations about less government, right? Just less government intervention, just less government in general. Uh, I don't really know too many people that want more government intervention. So I, maybe I'm just isolated, but most people always agree. They're like, cause you know, when we're talking left or right, it's like, Hey man, do you like smoking weed? You know, if you're on the left and people are like, yeah, I love it. It's awesome. It's like, do you think it's bullshit that the government outlawed it? Yeah, I think it's bullshit. Cool. So that's a that's a less government type of circumstance right there. <laughs> you guys, yeah. you, you picking up what I'm putting down right there? You know, <laughs> hey man, you know, it's like, it's kind of cool, right? You know, uh, and I think that that's just as a, as a small, very emotional piece for people to look at. And I totally agree with, with a wide variety of government programs. Uh but what I don't agree with is just this like, foundation and principle that politicians can bribe voters. And that's kind of the one thing I've saw in the last few months. It, what is also really interesting is that in uh, uh, post-World War II Europe, what was happening with the expansion of socialism was that people were essentially being bribed with uh, middle-income families middle income professional families were they were um, the government was saying we're going to pay for your education it's interesting now because what's happening where you have these socialist policies that are spreading that have spread across Europe and they've been in place for decades now they land on our shores they've been here and these have been in talking points for a long period of time but they start this Socialism and communism starts by saying we're going to pay for education and healthcare. That's how they start. And again, I, the data's out there. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because everybody sits there and goes, like, man, that's something that everybody should be paying for. You know, it's like, not really, man. Like, if you're a less government person, you can't, the government can't just leave you the fuck alone. It can't because people, I think they're inherent to their, it's, it's like a human psychology issue. People will always want to control other people for some fucking weird ass reason. They, your neighbor always wants to have control over what the fuck you put in your yard. It's insane to me. I don't know why. I mean, look at HOAs for Christ's sake. Yeah, I was going like, to say the HOA is the original government. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, Hey man, you can't, you yep. can't. That fence can't be white. Yeah. That, you know, like that, that fence can't be over six feet tall. And you know what? There's no lawn mo, you know, lo, no, no uh, lawn gnomes. You know, you can bring down the, the property values. Like when there's always some Karen or some other asshole that's going to be enforcing your HOA and they love it. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have this group of people in the United States that are always just like, 
they're infatuated, they're in love, and they're, they want control. Yeah, yeah, they want fucking control, and they want to fucking force. They want to like forcefully, uh, economically and emotionally rape somebody else because they're like, I think I know what's best for you, and I can't understand for the life of me why there's there this crazy conversation from 360 degrees in our United in this beautiful country that we have. The things that I hear all the time are, you know, but you need to like, like from the, from the Christian right, for instance, you know, this is a, this is a Christian country. You guys need to worship Jesus or something. You're like, Hey man, like this is the United States. Like don't force your bullshit on me either. Like I, I, I I don't want to like, if we don't want to be socialist, we can have a conversation about it, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can be God fearing and worship the, you know, whether you're Baptist or, you know, Muslim or whatever the heck you got going on. That's awesome. That's what this is all about. But you always have a group of Christians on one side. They're like, everybody needs to worship Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And they want to be like, okay, and nobody can do anything that's not outside of the, you know, the Bible's teaching. And you're like, that, that's not the way this whole thing goes. Every, everybody has to be right. Right. Where it's like, you believe something and I'm a religious person and, and you feel like your religion is like, hey, my right. religion is the religion, the rest of you guys don't know what you're, you're doing. Wrong. You're you're listening to false prophecies and right. false gods and everything else. But but people grow up in those religions and that's what that that's their life. They've known that since they were a baby, you know? And it's like, no, this is what I know. I've never studied all these other religions. It's but but it's like, hey, what's wrong with like me believing in my religion, you believing in your religion, and us not like I mean, that's how wars <laughs> started originally. It was all religious based right. battles, right? You know, back going back to the the BC days, I mean, everything was like religious battles of like, hey, no, the Christian is the true religion. It's like, no, Allah is, you know. But I wonder what's but, happening before religion, do you think? Like before there was religion, why were people killing each other then? Well, so here's a funny <laughs> thing. And I tell Casey, uh, like you've been to Iraq, Afghanistan. Right. I remember going, we, we were looking for an individual. We did this raid in Afghanistan, looking for some guy in a right. small little town. It wasn't even a town. It was like 10 mud huts, you know? Yeah. And, and we go in in, in the, uh, under the blanket of darkness, like we typically do, Hell looking yeah. for, let's say, a guy named Bob. Mm-hmm. Yep, Bob. <clears throat> we go in, we, we start breach, you know, simultaneous breach on these few buildings in this area. And we go in and I, I literally find it was a table almost like this. Um, obviously not as well built or sanded. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It is amazing. And, uh, there's a human head just laying center of this table. And we start questioning this guy and another teammate of mine's like, Hey, I found a pair of legs. Like there was a legs cut what? off in this other room. And it was like a two bedroom house. Right. You know how they are. So we're like, out of curiosity, Gotta what, be why is there a human head on yeah, the table? Yeah. Like, what's going on here, man? Yeah. <clears throat> and the, the Terps doing all the talking yeah. for us. And he's like, oh, it's a neighbor, <laughs> villaging neighbor. He kept coming over and like stealing my sheep. So I cut his head off, killed him yeah. to make an example of him. Yeah. And like, I feel like that's the battles that were fought. Like they're still being yeah, fought yeah. in the Middle East. Like the Middle yeah. East is what like 2000 BC was, you right. know? Yeah. And it's just like, hey, farmers just trying to make a living, just trying to avoid theft of their property, work hard, like leave my shit alone. I'll leave you alone. But if you come over and start messing with my way of life, my farm, my family, like I'm just going to cut your head off and put it on the the center table and just let people know not to mess with my shit. Yeah, it was a tribal, had to be tribal and banned. Like before that, I'm thinking even before, like before that, it would had to been like, you, you know, you had the developmental strains or if you believe in evolution and the, like the, uh, you know, homo sapien, homo habilis, the Neanderthal. And you had all these like different people cruising around on the, on the, on the earth. So they were probably beating each other to death because they just like looked different, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there's got to be that. But then there's the tribal aspects of things. So regionality, maybe they're not different between genetics but then it'd be like tribal, but you'd have, you'd have a wide variety of reasons why people would fucking kill each other. And then they're like, they, 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 they evolved past that. So then they're, they were probably evolving past just like Neanderthal and Homo sapien and all these different kind of regional aspects. 
So then they got into tribal warfare. Then now you get religious. So be more religious warfare. So now we're getting, I, I think, you know, now we're kind of combining kind of a, we're, we might be evolving past religious warfare into more of a land and resources. Yeah. Economic. Yeah. Right. So it's like land and resource type type warfare. And then it's obviously uh, political. So you'd have political philosophy. So you'd have ideology or political philosophy. You'd have a combination of motivating factors, but truly it's probably more about resources than anything else. And I feel like that battle is going to get worse as we go down the pipe. Obviously, the population is growing at an exponential rate. You know, the world's population is just, I mean, it's going to reach a level that's going to be unsustainable mm-hmm. on yeah. this on this planet, right? Unless Elon Musk gets us some some real estate on Mars or something. Yeah, but, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, and I think that's going to get worse. I mean, on a larger scale, right? You run out of resources, you have to go get it. And obviously it's like, look, I got to take care of my own. I got to take care of my family. So right. if I got to steal your food storage to take care of my wife and kids, I'm probably going to steal your food storage. But, um, so thinking about, you know, preparing for the apocalypse and shoots food storages and whatnot, how was uh, Glover's grand opening up there? Was oh, it was it awesome. Rad? He's got a beautiful place. Um, He's got, uh, I think he's got a couple buildings up there in, in the beautiful Hebrew, which I think is probably one of the prettiest places in the state. It overlooks yeah. Deer Creek, the backside of Timpanogos, which is a beautiful, you know, yeah, 12,000 foot mountain. Yeah. And uh, he's got a big warehouse where I think he does all his mobility training. That's cool. Um, and then he's got a little shop, you know, similar to kind of like the Black Raffle Coffee look, the rustic wood and things like that, where he sells all his like uh, field craft survival stuff, yeah. like tourniquets. He's got, you know, books. Um holsters now and a bunch of other stuff. And then he's got this cool conference room upstairs with a little wine bar and it's, it's pretty cool. So he, uh-huh. he did a good job with it. He's got a good crew up there. I got to go up there. I I was snow machining, obviously. Right? Yeah. Tell me about that. I was jealous. I couldn't go. I got <laughs> stuck in the crappy Utah snow while you're up in the deep Idaho powder. <laughs> uh, well, we got these snow machines several months ago. So what, what sludge shit. do you have? Balls? What, what do I have? How are we looking up there, Sergeant Best? On target on time, boys! Fire for a flip! Here we go! Set! You heard him! Fire for a flip! Yeah, we have ski do nice. 850s. That's what we have. And they're wrapped in camouflage and they have like tigers. I just like that you don't even know what they are. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I don't. Uh, I just told Balls that he needed to go get some snow machines some for the company. The trailer. Yeah, Here's yeah. my card. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's like, go get them. Because I like doing these company events. Like, you know, that's one of the reasons why Jamie, obviously, you're. Uh, Sister-in-law? Sister-in-law. So, yeah, she works here. Um, logistically heavy company events that are like really fucking fun. And we go out, we get some content. But really, we just... The big thing is, is it's a team bonding exercise where you get to go out and jump snowmobiles and, you know, hang out where did, in hot where, What was the name of the place again? Uh, Bergdorf. And Bergdorf is a... North of McCall, Idaho. It's a it's a really cool place. It's a it's it's twenty two miles in there. So you're you're riding sleds. I took my daughter and my wife. So the only way to get into snowmobiles is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, or like, uh, what snow are they called? Snooter scooter or sno- snooter? Oh, or what do you bikes? call those things? The snow bikes. Yeah. What do you those call things that? Are awesome. Yeah, snooter sickle. Yeah. So you got like snooter sickles and all this other shit that Balls was telling me about, but. uh, yeah, we took a bunch of people in. What was it 14 people, uh, give or take? I was waiting for my invite, yeah. Oh, no, I wasn't going to invite fun. you. No, I, know. I, I invited I know. Jamie. Now yeah. I have, now that I have at least, you know, one like um, Curry-ish type uh, family member, I am satisfied now. I got it all. That's it's, it's fine. Now. So I've been, I've been replaced, yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So... Um, She's handier too. She knows how to do shit. She like... I try to hire Jamie. She's just too cool for me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, she knows she, how to do shit. She, she helps is, Colin. She, she helps is, a lot of the guys around here. Like, no, they like because they don't know how to like change tires and start a chainsaw and shit she, like that. Can she hear me? No. She, okay, yeah, good. She can. I was gonna say she's she's one of the most organized people I've ever met. Oh yeah. Keeping a schedule, like I'll be looking More for something than online. Casey. Uh, they're they're equally organized. If you've oh, ever seen Casey's pantry, everything's got like a like a bin or a box. It's all labeled, yeah. which is great for me, you know, because right. then it's easy for me to nice. find the cereal. Um, but no, it's uh, organizational skills are like next level. You know, there's like organized mom, and then there's like the the cookie level, the cooks, right. right? Jamie, Jamie, and Casey. Where do you think that comes from? Were their parents like that? Like their mom? Yeah, her dad's pretty OCD, Got like it. super OCD. He has an RV, like a a, more, um, a camper trailer, kind of yeah. like we do. Yeah. And I think he took it out one time last year because he wanted to get it dirty. Like it's got the, it's got Solid. the, you know, the bathroom in it, but he doesn't use the bathroom in it because he doesn't want to have to right. like get poop in the tank, which okay. is like, well, so why did you buy a, <laughs> a camper, you know? So we always tease him about it, but he is... You go to his house in his garage, like Casey always teases, which is actually probably true. Like you could eat, you could drop something on the floor and like pick it up and eat it. <laughs> and it's probably ki- like cleaning the most kitchen table. <laughs> like the place is like pristine, spotless. Like he goes in there. It's like the Ferris Bueller where he's like polishing his oh, yeah. thing with the diaper, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I think that, I think it came from dad. Mom's mom's pretty OCD and clean too, but dad's the, the probably the... Is your mom or are your parents, were your parents like that? Like your dad? Oh my or your mom? gosh. Heck no. Really? Um, I love my mom, but my house was a disaster, mm. a disaster. I mean, there were parties and kids doing drugs in the basement. <laughs> my, my little brother would go marijuana plants on his windowsill. Are my, you kidding me? My mom would go down and water them because uh, she thought they were just like regular plants. <laughs> she said like, oh, I think it's so cute that Alex oh is like God. growing his own little garden. And I'm like, mom, those are marijuana plants. You're watering. <laughs> you're watering. You're, your, your yeah, marijuana you're, plants. <laughs> Yeah, now you're incriminated on some like marijuana growing scheme because you're the water lady. Right. But no, I mean, it was like we had dishes overflowing and um, it was it was a mess. And I, I myself am pretty OCD. And I, right. I don't know, my dad was kind of that way, you yeah. know, with the river rafting. Yeah. In the river rafting world, everything's like very clean, organized. Like it's all... If I, you're a good guy, for if sure. If you're a good guy. Yeah. If you're a good guy. And anybody who does anything that requires equipment, like ice climbing, rock climbing, yeah. river rafting, like... You got it. In, in the military, right? It's yeah. like your equipment is your lifeline. And if you don't take care of your equipment, you're going to die. Mm-hmm. So in any adventure sport that you do where you require your equipment to get you from point A to point B alive, like you should probably take care of the equipment. Yeah. So I think that's where I got it was just like everything was had its place. Like when I get my boat all strapped, everything's like strapped, like loose ends tucked up in case you flip. Well, you, you have to, I think. And especially if you have the combination of military experience with like the outdoor adventure, the logistical OCD is whatever I, whatever that is. Because I'll go to places and work with different guides and I want to organize their shit. Like depending on who it is, I want to organize their shit. I want to like go in and be like, hey man, I really want to like help you out. I want to, I want to label stuff and make sure that you have your, your everything sequentially put together in different bins and dry bags. And, uh, but I know that's not my place. So I know if I had my, Outfit. Kind of, I do, but I can't. <laughs> I I, yeah, I kind of <laughs> do. But if it was my whole like, complete endeavor to do something, it <clears throat> everything would be numbered. Everything would be sequentially organized. It would be so fucking weird for people to walk into because they'd be like, "This is this is this is a little bit insane." But to your point, when you need something, you have to be able to find it. If you don't put it together and you organize it well, when you hire novice people and they're moving people from point A to point B in, in a logistically burdens, burdensome way, uh, they, they won't be able to do it correctly. Um, there he is. There's my dog. He just ran in here. Hey, but I think that it's, it, it's interesting because the guides that I've seen, whether it's hunting guides or rafting guides or type of guide with a service, if they have a military background and they've done this kind of organizational life-saving equipment, they, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's fucking amazing. 
It's like, oh my God, this is what it, this is what this thing should look like. Everything works. The yeah. guys are good. They're disciplined. It goes back to this knife. Mm-hmm. So, which I, is amazing. I, I feel like uh, discipline. Obviously, every year that we go down the path of you know this roller coaster we call life. Uh, discipline kind of goes out the window a little bit, right? Yeah. People become a little more lazy. We become a little more complacent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember my my grandpa, Jack Curry, like the guides, if you sleep in like two minutes past five o'clock and mm-hmm. water's not boiling, you're not getting that coffee ready, he would go get a bucket of water. And, and your it. guides typically sleep in the kitchen, oh, yeah. right? Either grab a seat bag, throw them in the river or oh, grab solid. a bucket of water, throw yeah. it at him. And Did it was he have like, military background? He didn't. Wow. But he was like that. super disciplined and everything was just perfectly organized and clean. Like, it, it, and going back to what you said, it's like, hey, I knew where to find everything and it was operational, right? If it right. was a flashlight, the bad, fresh batteries in it. If it was a water filter, it had all the hoses and the new filter and all the charcoal and whatever else with it. It's, it's not like you ever had to worry about like the... the an outfit I run with, I won't mention a name, but right. you know, we had an issue with the boat. One of the valves came open and it was leaking because it was an inflatable floor. Yep. I go in their toolkit to get, you know, some glue and stuff to re, you know, seal yeah. this valve. And there was like spilt glue in there. Like screwdrivers <laughs> are stuck to the, stuck to the bottom of the rocket yeah, can. Yeah. Was that mine? Was that, was no, that no, 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 no. It was not yeah. you, <clears throat> but I'm like, what a shit show. Like yeah. what an absolute shit show. Like, heaven forbid, like, you need to patch a boat to get down river. Like, I, I can float down with a, sure. a non-inflatable floor. It just sucks because right. water comes into sucks, it. But, yeah. but you pop a boat, you hit a rock, and I have to fix it. And my toolkit looks like this. And there's dried glue on the bottom. And, I, you know, the patches are all ruined. Like, I'm fucking screwed. It's interesting because people think there's a class of people that think that guys like us are too OCD. Like you're, you're too organized. And that, that other, that other section of the people, they, they, they'll never get it. They'll never get it for whatever reason, because somebody will look at that can. And I, I, I see this in the company a lot over the last few years where, uh, you know, people will walk by a, a overflowing garbage can or, you know, they'll, They'll uh, keep their food out or they'll won't, won't, won't replace something in their big room refrigerator. Uh, I don't know. It's, a, it's, a, it's such a wide variety of things that people just walk by every day and they don't fix. They don't look at. Um, not, not my problem. Not my problem. You know, I don't know if it, 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 it's a lot of it is laziness. I truly do think it's, it's a lot of it is laziness because I do that. I think about things in that context. Like, man, I really don't want to do this, but I got to do it, yeah. right? And so you have to kind of switch yourself over from, I don't want to do this right now. I'm fucking exhausted to, but I have to do it. And it drives my wife fucking crazy, I think, because it doesn't matter what time <clears throat> it is. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I got to get this done. Like, I, I got I to get this done. Like, it doesn't matter if it's 2.30 in the fucking morning. It doesn't matter if it's 2.30 in the afternoon. Like, it's like, I got to, if I flip the switch to, it's got to get done and it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. It, yeah. but it you've drives that, you've people crazy. A habit of that. So you, you have that instilled in you from, you know, pre-military life, military, river rafting. And, and it's part of you now where I feel like a lot of people who haven't gone through certain things or have lived some kind of, you know, complacent life, they haven't built that habit of like, oh, if I walk past this garbage can at work and it's full, right. I should empty it. Not like, oh, it's not my job kind of mentality. But you build this habit of, of things in your head where something clicks and it's like, oh yeah, nobody wants to do it. Like nobody, nobody. looks forward to like, Oh, I'm so excited to go empty the garbage can, you know? Nobody. But it, but it's a habit that you've built over time. Uh, and it's like, hey, that's the person I am. That's the person I want to be. And if I continue to do it, then I'll always be that person. Well, And it's interesting because people, I think there's a spillover in psychology. I, I, I do believe in this. I think there's a spillover in psychology. And You walk across, you you walk past the garbage can, you, you know, you Wake walk past early. the thing, whatever it is, right? You, 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 you sleep in a little bit late, you walk past the garbage can, 
You, you know, you don't clean the soap scum out of the, whatever, the shower, you blah, blah, blah. And it's not like it's all the time, but I, I, when I say this, it's, if that becomes your life, that is your entire life. That means you, you know, you eat a little bit too much. You, uh, you, you, you just kind of let your, your discipline continue to slide. And what I have lived my life and I do it like I ebb and flow. I can't have, I don't know if like, I, I, I love Jocko. He's fucking amazing. He's an awesome, awesome guy. I don't know how the fuck he gets up at four 30 every day. I get up at four 30, four or five days a week, depending. But if I sleep in to five 30, I'm not going to worry about it. Right. I just fucking sleep into five 30. Like I just sleep until I wake up and then I get up and I fucking go to, go to work. That's what I do. But I think there's a level of, um, if you have discipline and it kind of goes up and down, right. You'll increase your discipline and kind of slide off and it keeps going up and down. It's kind of like a, uh, a wave, right. Just mm-hmm. kind of goes up and down and you have to fight it back. And I call it, um, you know, you got to have your little victories, right? When you're starting to turn it back on. Because I'll catch myself. I'll catch yeah, myself and be do. like, ah, you know what? I haven't done this or I haven't done that. Or, you know, let stuff kind of pile up. And then all of a sudden I'm like, man, I'm fat and I have no fucking discipline. And then I'm just like... The thing is, if you've been on that peak, you know what it's like, right? right? Where if you've never been on that peak... And, and we all, we all fall off the peak. Like you said, we all ride that wave up and down. Like, you know, we had this, this last kid and I say that last kid. <laughs> <laughs> last, um, last kid. We weren't able to go between, between the kid, Rivers, her name, I won't call her kid, number six. Between number, <laughs> number six, six, the, the gym closures, six. daycare closures with COVID-19 yeah. and everything else. Like our gym life kind of went to crap. Like yeah. me and Casey, we were avid gym goers, 5.30 every morning, we'd go. Yeah, you and were we were hot. like in the best. You were super I, hot I before was, that. Right? Like, yeah, it's shredded. Lucky and, you, uh, Casey. <laughs> lucky me. <laughs> and anyway, so everything's closed and we can't take the kid to daycare. We have right. no one to watch the kid. So we just kind of quit going to the gym. We're like, hey, it's temporary, but I can always get back into shape. I know what that's like. I have right. that discipline once things loosen up, which they have a little bit. So now we went from like zero days to three days a week which is, which is good. I feel like I'm getting back in shape and eventually we'll go full time again. But it's like, look, I'm, I'm okay. And, and things are out of my control here. So I'm, I'm going to drop into the slump a little bit as far as my fitness is concerned, sure. but I know what I need to do. And I have the discipline to get back to that, the top of that wave when I, when I need to, or when right. I can, yeah. or when it fits the schedule. And, and as busy as, as things are, running the business and everything else and six kids. It's like, look, I have to, I have to pull from here a little bit to give, to give to this area. But again, right in the top of those waves, I know, I know what it's like. I know what it takes and going back to the gym after not being in it for a year, like it, it sucks, man. Like sucks. just the soreness and like my, my PRs and everything is like down 300%. Like my, I went to bench the first time I was going back to the gym. I'm like, holy Crush it. shit. Like it was embarrassing. Yeah. No, like I couldn't lift anything. Yeah. I'm like, you know, 135 is doing <laughs> three sets, just trying to get back to normal. I'm like, anyway, but, but well, it's like, I can get back to that. How old are you? 44, 43? 41. 41. Okay. Well, you don't look a day over 44, but uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, no, I think he's a good. I, I was thinking about that today because I, I I've been running in the mornings like every day, and uh, I like to run. Like I don't do it because I'm like I don't do it because I'm like oh I gotta run to fucking you know trim back or whatever. No, I like I like to run. I'm one of those people that I like to run. I actually wish I could spend more time running because uh, I truly enjoy it. And uh, but I've I've had like fucking injury after injury over the last few years. And most of it is probably stress, I would imagine. You know, uh, you know a few things about managing stress. Just a little bit, I would have... I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of assuming you do. Father of six, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Father of six, uh, <laughs> you know, a business with employees. Yeah. Uh, most of it is all uh, stress for me. Because if I'm, if I'm really working through something, I don't sleep very well. And when I don't sleep very well, excuse me, when I don't sleep very well, I start making bad decisions in the sense of I start drinking a lot of coffee. 
Um, and then I'm fucking wired and I, I start doing things in a very, you know, um, I would say, uh, caffeinated way, you know? <laughs> uh, and then about three o'clock in the afternoon, I start to hit my fucking break, whatever that break is. And no, there's no, there's no, there's no amount of caffeine that can pull me out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll make some bad food decisions, you know, I'll have like rice or fucking piece of pizza yeah, or we're whatever. We're right? after this if you want to go. Fuck yeah, that. we are. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we are. And it, I got to just like grain it in, man. But I, everything for me, it always revolves around sleep. Like sleep is the epicenter of my life in the sense of having two kids and a business and the stress. Uh, last night I was up at midnight. So I went to bed. I put the kids, I put the girls down at like 8.30. I fell asleep. Like I was dead asleep at 8.30. Wide awake at 12.30 a.m. Like wide the fuck awake at 12.30 a.m. Yeah. You, you have the same uh, sleep schedule as I do. It Four hours, wide awake. And so then I'm like, and there's nothing to fucking do at midnight. So I get up, I go down to my office, down, down downstairs in my house. I turn the fucking light on because I'm just like, I'm wide, I'm wide awake. I can't go back to sleep. I'm listening to a book. Um, I try to look for some shit to do. There's nothing to do. Meaning I can do I, a thousand and one things I can do yeah. all Heaven the time. Heaven forbid you open your laptop or your phone because then you're done for. That's, well, that's, I did. That's three hours right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I was up for two hours. Yeah. So I was up from midnight to 2.30. And then, uh, and then I, I finally went back to sleep at 2.30 to 6.00 which is like the worst yeah. fucking sleep schedule ever. So you ever. have, I'm, I'm glad, to, I'm actually kind of, you know, glad to hear this because I'm my sleep schedule, I wake Misery up probably company. every hour. Yeah. Misery loves company every two hours. And I'll lie in bed because I'm like, if I get up, I'm going to be up. So I'll lie in bed and I just like, my brain starts going, <laughs> yeah. whether it's life, kids, business, employees, you know, what do I need to do? How can I be a better father, a <laughs> better businessman, better whatever these new investment projects. I mean, there's a thousand things that are literally running through my head. And when your brain's going, obviously your body's not going to go to sleep. Like you, you just don't go from thinking something like, you know, it's not going to go. Yeah. So I, I literally try to like just black my brain out and then something pops up and then I'll fall asleep. And I go through the, these increments where I sleep in like one hour increments. So sleep for an hour, I think for 45 minutes, I sleep for an hour, I think for 45 minutes. And then we have our 10 month old daughter who I love her to death, but she is the worst sleeping baby. <laughs> and of course it had to be the last one yeah, when I'm yeah, 41 and she's 10 months old and she's still not sleeping through the night. So four okay. o'clock every single morning, she's just crying. Yeah. Yeah. 4 a.m. every morning. And, uh, you know, Casey being the awesome mom, she is, she always goes and takes care of her, but right. I'm still awake, you know, wakes me up. And then the thing about me is once I'm awake, like it, it takes me at least 45 minutes to fall back to sleep. Yeah. Like I can't just wake up and be like, <clears throat> like Casey can, which I'm envious of that. But I fall asleep easy at night. Like I, I, I so what I've been doing for years is I, I have an audio book that I set on, um, a 0.9 speed in the so the the cadence of the 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 person narrating it is slower so that's they're talking really slow typically it's like a british accent and it's something so fucking dry that i i i can think about it kind of gets me into sleep mode because i can visualize what's going on so for years i can't sleep without it now so I have to have an audiobook playing at, you know, point something speed with some fucking British Is it accent. Sean Connery? See? I wish. <laughs> I, I it's but it's the only thing that works because yeah. if I don't have that, it's like me in a blankie. If well, I think it, you get I your mind focused on like you're listening to the words. I gotta pull it like, out. I gotta yeah. pull my head out of th- what's going on think here. Mode, yeah. And uh and then shove it into, you know, I, I went through the entire uh American Revolution um, through like Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson's perspective, George Washington. Uh, there, there's like a wide variety of narratives out there from different audio pers- audio book perspectives. But and I have to keep playing over and over the the, the same chapter. So I'll start like in chapter one. I, I literally just just downloaded a new book last night at two a.m. It's like forty seven hours long. It'll take me three months 
to go through this because I have to, I'll, I'll, I won't even get through a chapter every evening. So I'll get through like a half a chapter every evening or whatever. It'll take me three to four months just to get through this entire So do you thing. have this plan while like Kate's in bed next to you and then yeah. she's just like, oh my god. Well, gosh. she's got noise machines and black, we got blackout curtains and noise machines. I've had to be so aggressive towards sleep because if I don't have noise machines, audiobooks, blackout curtains, I'll be awake nonstop. I won't go to sleep. It, it's It's not possible for me to fucking go to sleep. It's... Your room's horrible. just a big sound abatement. You it's have, fucking you have, horrible. Like, the foam on the wall. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, dude, I wish I had that. It's fucking horrible. Like, you know, I don't take, you know, I can't take Ambien. I can't take some of these other drugs. So I've just got to be really disciplined when it comes to putting myself into this blackout fucking noise machine, essentially, that's got a little audio book playing in the background. And I just try to fucking go to sleep. Uh, I wish I could. My God, I'm so envious of people that can sleep like nine hours. Oh my God. If I, if I could sleep nine hours, I just think about, I could probably build a fucking spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> I think about, just like I'm like, I'm running at like half speed all the time. You know what I mean? I don't fucking know. Yeah. Seriously, what are you going to do after this? Uh, Lucky 13. We're going to go Are to you lunch. really? Yeah. I wasn't oh, kidding. No, give me that big pastrami burger. What do you got planned for the next couple months? You got anything? You got anything I don't. Cool I don't know. I you know we got this Biden thing. We're waiting to see what comes down the pipe with this awesome assault rifle ban that uh, uh, that Biden is going to try to pass. Universal background check. So we're we're kind of in this holding pattern. The whole gun community to see what the president and our uh, you know elected politicians. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> are are going to do our, with our, our great, lives? Yeah. Our our, our benevolent leaders that yeah. we pay that work for us that so. And we always you know, adapt, you know, yeah, we'll, we we'll adapt, we'll survive. And, and this isn't contrary to popular belief. Like everyone thinks this, this will be the first assault rifle band ever hit, you know, the, we the United the, States. We went it's through like, the Clinton era, man. Yeah, we had like, eight years of assault rifle bands. It didn't yeah. do shit. Columbine still happened, all that stuff. You know, it's like, shit. again, we have, we have data dating back to historical days of we've had an eight year assault rifle ban that was enacted under Clinton and then expired under Bush. And guess what? It didn't do shit. Didn't do shit. Like I, my only message for most people is, I I wish they would understand that uh, liberty is not given, right? It's something that we just have. It's our country, right? It's politicians, uh, you know, and other people forcing their their idea of utopia on others. It's just a dead end road. And yeah, it's the, the whole mask. The mask thing is a perfect dude. Perfect what example. do you mean, bro? Triple uh, mask up, triple mask. Oh, like it will have an individual right, right? I mean, the the government. Uh, anyway, this is like a whole new podcast. I don't uh, want to yeah. get don't, going down the path. I, I, of we can. We got a but. couple minutes left. I think this is great. I think it's a great conversation okay, for us to so, end with. So the mask. The it's mask. Great. The government's like, no, it's mandatory. <laughs> you have to wear this thing on your yeah, face. Yeah, on your fucking face. Like, in what world did you think that the government could tell you that you have to wear something on your face when it you leave work. your house? Like, like how uh, tyrannical yeah. is that? Where it's like, look, there, there's this illness called COVID-19 going around. It's equivalent to the flu. Let's say it's even a little bit worse, right? right? Where it's like, hey, this isn't, this isn't the first disease to hit the shores of the United States. Like we've gone through swine flu, you know, HN1, all this other stuff. The flu's been around forever. Right. And, but now we're going to shut down small businesses. You can't go out and eat. You can't, you can't have a Christmas party with more than four people at your fucking house on Christmas. Something that's been in your family tradition for decades, you know, before. And when you leave your house, you have to wear a mask and not only one mask now, but two, two. masks. Two masks. It's like, we well, have an individual right where it's like, look, Three if, masks. If, if you're, if you're prone to being sick, if you're scared of getting sick, then you have that individual right to stay in your fucking home, not go out, wear a mask. But what right do you have to, to, to go and tell somebody to like, Hey, you have to wear a mask too. It's like, uh, no, I don't. I'm a fucking free individual. Like, I don't have to do anything. But if you're scared of COVID-19 or coronavirus, 
Wear your mask, do your thing, avoid people, keep your six foot distance or stay home if you're scared. But let the rest of us live our lives. And if I get sick, that's upon me, you know? And I'm not going to come and complain that, hey, look, I, I, I got the flu and I had to stay home for a week and heaven forbid I die. People, and this may sound, you know, unsympathetic, Please. but people fucking die every fucking day from they a do. lot of different reasons. <laughs> they do. Re, I mean, heart disease, the number one killer in the fucking US. But it's like, hey, you're not going to shut down fast food restaurants or all these other, you know, thousands of things that cause heart disease. But it's like COVID-19 that has you know, a death rate similar to flu, maybe a little bit more. And, and we literally shut down the U.S. economy, put people out of business. You know, we changed the way kids hang out or can't hang out and the depression that causes, the suicide rates have gone up. I mean, it is insane. And the logic is just absolute nonsense. And then it's, you have the coronavirus is up 99%, but the flu was down. All these other diseases just magically went down. Heart disease is down. The flu, Fuck flu yeah. deaths are down, but it's because everyone's other now dying from people- COVID-19 are better at running other people's lives. That's the, right? It, Somebody else is be- actually better at running your life than you. Yeah, we That's don't know any cool better. That's the cool thing, yeah. This goes back to, to us being fucking gullible. <laughs> and, and it's like, the government knows better. The government is yeah. telling me what to do. And, and, and politicians what, and, are the, bri- the best and the brightest. They know what's best for everybody, Neil. Yeah. They're the best and the brightest that we, we have to offer. They know yeah. what's best. They do. You know, I mean, thank God we have all these great fucking politicians that that uh, are benevolent and they give us things like our own taxpayer dollars back. You know, they give us our own freedoms back, like things like that, that we should be just so grateful that they do for us because, you know, it, it it's just like we living in the United we're States. We're so lucky. We're so lucky yeah. to have It's like these, mom and dad letting us live at to home have until these we're like 40. 70 year old men and women, these 70 and 80 year old men and women that give us the things that we already own back to us. We're just so, we should be so fucking grateful that just these, these fucking old, corrupt, dumb motherfuckers have so much control over what we do. Like we should be so grateful, which gives me back to, I think we should round off with French knives for everybody. The trench knife (laughs) was acceptable in American society at one point in time to issue to soldiers because it's an instrument of death. And ultimately their mission was to defeat their enemy and the enemies of the United States. Uh, Today, we still do the same thing by the way. So American service members are sent overseas to defend America. With a against different their, tool. But what I think is so interesting about this, and to, to say it again, is that this is would never be socially acceptable, but it's the same fucking thing. Cancel Guys, culture would be all over that. It would be all over this. Yeah. Like, you know, this is, this is scary. Yep. Cancel. You know what's scary Somebody telling us that we need to wear fucking three masks. That's fucking scary. Anyway, thanks, Neil. I love you, buddy. Thanks for having me.